Thank you, and thank you everyone for being here to, to listen to my work. And as uh, has been said, I am a PhD student under the supervision of Ornella Robuti in Turin. And I, my work is about investigating the didactical use of internet memes. Um, the aims of our research are, are to verify our a priori analysis of the meanings of the memes we, we presented at CERMI, comparing it to experimental data. Investigate the didactical use of internet memes uh, in a secondary school context. And last but not least, connect school culture to out of school culture. Uh, just a little step back. <laughs> to focus about memes, because they might not be so well known by everyone. The term meme was coined by Richard Dawkins in 1976 to indicate a unity of cultural human culture that is transmitted from one person to another, changing and evolving in the passage, but maintaining its identity. Almost 30 years later, they said the term internet memes, or simply memes, used to indicate a viral image or video that changes and evolving, passing by one web user to another, but the web user, which is the important part, personalize it, change it, and contribute to its evolution, usually in a humorous way. Memes are very well diffused on the internet. Uh, young people know them very much. Uh, this chart shows you, shows you the occurrences of the hashtag memes on the social platform Instagram. As, as you can see, in March 2019, we almost hit 80 million occurrences for the hashtag memes. But despite this diffusion, they are not so studied in literature. They are studied from the point of view of language or semiotic or communication. But as you can see, in education, they are not so studied. And in mathematical education, they are really understudied. There are only two studies. One of them is our work presented at CERMI. And uh, memes are basically jokes. But the teams uh, that you, net users have been creating memes about have evolved in these 30 years. They started with funny cats. They evolved to politics, and then finally they evolved to maths. And you can find on social platforms a really huge amount of mathematical memes and mathematical themed grouped in social platforms. This example we shall be focusing on comes from Reddit, which is a social platform, and from a thread that is called AP Students dedicated to mathematical memes. So we ask ourselves, uh, which information do we need to understand this meme? Just to unpack the reasoning, the first thing, we have to recognize it as a meme. I mean, you have to know what memes are. In this case, uh, you have to recognize that the elements in the picture act uh, as metaphors. The second level, you, you have to give some meaning to the picture. In this, in this case, in the background image, you can notice from the top part to the bottom part that the person is uh, unaffected by the bullet. There is a bullet shot in the top part, and the person in the bottom part is unaffected. And then you add the mathematical symbols, which you have to be able to interpret it. And, uh, as you can see, the derivative has no effect on the exponential function, has no formal effect on the exponential function, as well as the bullet has no effect on the sitting people. And if you match all these meanings together, eventually you grasp the full meaning of the meme, and hopefully you will laugh. If we upgrade to a second example, you see there is a composite function in this case, and you see there is another uh, element in the image, <laughs> in the bottom image, because if you take the derivative of the exponential function with 2x as exponent, the result, a mathematical result, doubles the original function. And 
the, the interesting thing is not just the meme, but the comments uh, that go with the memes. Meme memes are social objects that are not only shared and liked, but they are heavily commented. And if you look at the comment here, you see they are not only appreciative comments, but they are comments that focus on the mathematical part. So there is really this ex exchange of knowledge from some knowledgeable, knowledgeable, not someone who, who knows more than you, <laughs> as Steve Lerman reminded us in the in the plenary. Uh, if you look at the last comment, you see that the mathematical explanation it is really a proper mathematical explanation. So it's important to understand that here mathematics spontaneously leaves uh, the school context uh, and is something to be proud about. Because if you know the mathematics, you can be part of this group. And these groups are really communities of practice where knowledge is exchanged from one person to another. So Based on this analysis, we formulated our idea of the meanings of a meme. A triple S construct, as we call it. The, partial, the first partial meaning is the structural meaning, which is connected to the composition, the, the structure, the font, something that tells you that this is a meme. The second partial meaning is social and is connected to the image, uh, the syntax, uh, or whatever is conventionally shared on the internet. And the third part partial meaning is specialized and it focuses on a specific topic, which can be mathematics but can be something else, uh, in, as you can see in the third example. The interplay of all three meanings gives you the full meaning. If you miss one of the meanings, you will not understand the joke. And here we intend meanings following Kilpatrick in a sphere of practice where mathematical memes meanings are constructed. So we thought about introducing the idea of a didactical meme, that is a mathematical internet meme that can be used in a classroom for a didactical purposes. Going back to our examples, we made two more reflections. The first thing is that is what makes memes engaging is this interweaving of meanings. For students, usually, the hard part is the specialized meaning, but they really want to understand it. So this can be identified as a desirable difficulty, something that they want to overcome, and overcoming it, they might learn it better. On the other hand, the joke and that haha -ha moment we all have when you understand the meme shows us that a meme can be a conveyor of cognitive and emotional element, hopefully leading to stronger memories. So we focus for, for our theoretical framework on the connection between emotion and cognitive processing, following Zahn et al., but also on the cultural approach of, uh, of emotion uh, that was explained by Radford, because the emotions that are connected to memes, uh, that students and young people connect to memes, are really uh, induced by the social environment. The research question we uh, attempted to give answer to in this study are what is the student familiarity with social platform and meme? This is a basic question. Are the meanings of didactical memes recognized by students the same as we describe in the a priori analysis? What is the role of emotion in the learning process involving didactical memes? We conducted a teaching experiment in October 2018 with a class group of 22 students in, attending the 10th grade in the province of Turin. The didactical goal was to review and systematize knowledge about linear system. And the task was to create memes and videos explaining the mathematical content of the memes and this took three hours. And then we had the class discussion the following week of two hours. We collected many data. An entry form one month before, which was used to assess the social network use, a, an entry worksheet uh, for the meaning assessment, 
uh, memes, videos created by the students, uh, but also video recording of the creation process by two focus pairs and feedback forms, a reflective worksheet where students uh, were asked to reflect on memes I created and proposed them. And uh, finally, the video recording of the class discussion and an evaluation form two months after. The observed pairs we, we video recorded during the processes were selected mixing students with different abilities, mathematical and linguistical abilities, hopefully to have an emergence of interaction more substantial. And all activities were gathered in collective spaces that allowed reaction, that are really an integral part of the interaction of young people with memes. So the entry form assessed uh, that the student familiarity with social platform is, as we could imagine, really pervasive. You see that the majority of students are connected on social platform every day, more than once a day. And as far as memes are involved, you see that we ask, what do you do with, with memes? And one of the options was, I do not interact with memes, and no one chose it. I mean, they, they might create or just like them or share them, but they somehow interact with the memes. And the entry worksheet was focused on, on assessing the, if our meanings were the same as the student intended them. So the entry worksheet proposed this meme with three questions. In your opinion, what leads you to say that it is a meme and not a comic or a cartoon? And this was the structural part. What is the meaning of the image chosen as the background of the meme in your opinion, the social element? Which mathematical topic is recorded by the meme, the specialized part? And here you can see by their questions, the sample questions, they recognized this as a meme because the graphic formulation is typical of our meme, the classic meme font divided into two parts, structural elements, enable them to identify this as a meme. And for the social meaning, they say the blue color indicates something and the child gesture indicates something. So they, they have conventional rules about the images, the colors that are shared and help them to identify the social meaning, what we call the social meaning. And the specialized meaning, of course, was uh, uh, identified by 95% of the students, uh, and 81 agree that the fact that the, usually the middle term is forgotten, so it's, it's good to be happy about if you, if you remember it. And uh, going to our second research question, what is the role of emotion? We focused uh, on the pairs we video recorded during the processes because we were interested not only in the products, but we were interested in looking how these memes were created. And uh, these are the, the two memes created by the two focus pairs. And the strange things and the, is that they work in totally different way. Both pairs created their memes using meme generator website. So the structure was fixed. But the couple on the left, they had one mathematical idea in mind fractional equation to be solved with Kramer's method, which was horrifying for them. It was the worst part of the linear system topic they could think about. So they were really emotionally driven by this idea, and they browsed the mean generator website until they found an image that matched the uh, specialized meaning they had in mind. While on the, on, on the right, the, the other couple proceeded in an opposite way. They started looking at images and uh, thought about different possible mathematical element that matched the emotion that this image aroused in them. As in the reflective worksheet, uh, these were two uh, memes that I created and uh, I asked the students, can you imagine what is the mathematical meaning? And on the left part, 
everybody recognized the specialized meaning, the system, and connected it to the social meaning, uh, the, the, the sense of discomfort if someone uh, used the wrong method. But the meme on the right side uh, is, uh, is very interesting because really something funny happened because uh, in the worksheet they gave correct answer. But during the discussion, a student said that really he didn't remember what the transitive property was. And so the, the teacher asked, how can you give the co a correct answer in the worksheet why, if you don't know what the transitive property was? And they said, because of the meme. Because the social meaning of this image is the fact that the two elements in the meme are similar. So they gather the mathematical meaning from the social meaning. So what we found out is really that emotion and cognitive processing are connected, but the meanings, the structural, social, and specialized uh, partial meaning we imagine are assessed in different ways by students. They are more fluid, and emotion is more involved in these things. Emotion is really involved in the sharing part as well, because students uh, liked uh, and uh, shared uh, impression about memes, printed one and virtual one. So we had uh, uh, a confirmation of the fact that emotion in this case uh, are, can be considered a cultural phenomena. And in the feedback form, because everyone told someone else about this activity, the only uh, student who said no was not present during the activity. So imagine students going back home and telling parents or friends about a mathematical activity. Sounds strange. And they did, if you see, they all like this activity and they believe that having created a meme could really help them understand or, or remember better the topic. Uh, the evaluation form, which we administered two months after, uh, allows us uh, to think about a bonus question, which is, was not included in the research question, moving towards the affordances of didactical memes, because if we ask, describe your impression about the experience, and you see they had great time, fun and commitment, but really a different approach to mathematics, freedom of expression while having fun, and I think we think these are really meaningful answers. So to wrap up, what we have done so far, observation of products and web and exploratory experiment allowed us to formulate the a priori conjecture of the three meanings which we expose at CERMI. And the observation of the processes allowed us to confirm these three meanings levels and disclose, disclose the, the role of emotion. What could be the possible deepenings uh, on field research uh, about mathematical memes on the web. The idea of investigating memes as boundary objects between school culture and out of school culture as gateways between emotion and connection and humor and connection uh, and cognition as metaphor and as means or new kind of cultural transposition between generations. Spasibo. Thank you very much for this very Thank interesting you. talk. Thank you. Uh, now I think I have already learned a lot about memes. Yeah. I think we are supposed to have a small discussion now and some uh, questions. Uh, on the other hand, we're also supposed to have lunch within 10 minutes or something like that. So I have the suggestion that we just spend a few minutes in pairs discussing what kind of mathematics do, uh, could we expect arise from the memes or the use of memes, and then uh, when everybody has been uh, warmed up in that way, then we can have a few questions, and I guess that you would like to... Yeah, and if you want to email your, me your, your question or observation, please feel free, if we don't have time to exchange. Oh. So let's, let's spend a few minutes on a warm-up discussion in pairs about the memes. What kind of questions uh, do you sit with now.
Hello, I would like to pose a question. Um, yeah. So mathematics, um, learning mathematics is also very formal. And, um, and you have a structure of, of teaching. So where do you think would, uh, internet, would um, internet memes fit in the structure of a lesson? So at the beginning, at the end, or should it be everywhere around within a lesson? And what role does, could it play for the teachers to get together and work together on mathematics um, with the students and the formal structure on mathematics? Thank Thanks. you for your question. Uh, as I said, in, in this experiment and in the previous one, we tested memes just to systematize knowledge. But uh, I have an experience as a teacher before being a PhD student, and I tested memes uh, to trigger class discussion. Not to introduce new topics, but to somehow to see, to pose a, a question. They could be, it could be a small problem made into a meme, and my experience is this, they work very much. And I am in contact with other teachers, and they are experimenting this as well to systematize, but also with um, unpaired students, uh, with students with difficulties. The visual part uh, can be very helpful for them. And as I said, it, there are just two works uh, in mathematics education about memes, so everything is still to be done. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I, I don't know if you can really teach something new, but I think it, it, could be, it could be a good way to motivate students to use their social skills or skills they develop outside school. And in my experience is that students that are sometimes in the back of, of the of the classroom, uh, they may, might come up because they are not so good in mathematics, but they are good in me with memes. So that could be an idea. Yes. A usual textbook. Uh, can be uh, can be used for many many years, uh, but memes must be modern. Yeah, uh, it's uh, a new level of requirements to teacher. What do you think about it? You're right. Mm -hmm. Memes have to be modern. Have to be constantly updated. But I think this is something perhaps that teacher can learn from students and the zone of mutual development <laughs> is coming into action. Because we, uh, we can understand and we can learn something about their social, their way of interchanging things on social platforms, and that we can adapt it, and they can learn mathematics, <laughs> and we can learn memes. I also have a question. Yeah. Do you think the students are the ones to make the memes or are the teachers the ones to make them? What could be the point of letting the students make the, create the memes? The, the students creating the meme? I, I, the, the, the answer to the first question is I think both. I think it, both students and teacher can gather something from creating a meme. Um, the students... Uh, usually uh, co connect amusement to the creation of a meme. But really, they are thinking about mathematics in creating the meme. It's, it's a sort of informal learning. They are not really... Uh, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, I have been familiar with the political memes. Uh, yes. Uh, across the social platforms, for example, Twitter. Yes. Uh, but this didactical meme is, uh, uh, sounds to be interesting. Yeah. But don't you think that in the previous day, previous years, um, uh, many mathematics books, they will be using uh, cartoons yes. to, to express uh, somewhat similar to this uh, cartoons. Uh, 
uh, but the one thing is that um, uh, these memes creating, uh, yeah, it, it can be a, a moment of, uh, um, uh, at the moment, maybe interesting to both the teachers and the students, and the students are more current with the current actual themes, uh, with the photos and all these things. But don't you think that the uh, energy and time invested to create these memes, is it worth investing? That's my question. Oh, that, that's what we are researching about, actually. I, uh, for the first part of your question, yes, cartoons are, have been included in textbooks, in mathematical textbooks. But I think that the idea of memes is that you create them, is the creative part, is that I see an image, and this image might make me think of a mathematical concept. So I create a meme. Well, there is one question I didn't show you in the evaluation form we submitted two months after. I asked students, did you think of other mathematical memes? And they said, yes. Did you create them? Some, some said yes and some then said no, but it's a way of thinking because you do not write cartoons, but you can create memes easily with meme generator website. So it's the, the creative part that is important, I think. And obviously we are just looking into it. <laughs> We have another question. Hello, my name Hello. is Evgeny, I'm from Yandex. And uh, my question is about elementary classes. Do you have any kind of experience of y using that kind of approach in elementary? Um, could you comment it, please? And the, uh, w one of the questions inside is, uh, I think that names are usually ironic a little bit. Yeah. yeah? And um, how, it, how could it work with uh, with uh, elementary classes or not? What do you think about it? Thank you. That's a hard question because I, I really don't have a, an, an experience with elementary classes, nor as a teacher, nor as a, a researcher. Uh, I have seen memes about elementary mathematics. Um, but I think that uh, the memes that could be better used at the elementary level could be the more emotional ones, not about exactly the mathematical content, but about your interaction with mathematics and your emotion with mathematics. And as, a, as I said, there are meme generated websites which are really, really easy to use. I think that even elementary uh, children could use and, and create them, and it could be Perhaps it could be a good, a good way to have feelings emerge from the students, uh, or a misconception, or ideas, or um, I don't know, fears about mathematics. Something they won't tell you directly, but they might tell you with a meme. I don't know, just an idea. I have another question before you. Uh, don't you think there could be a danger that some misconceptions could be spread out by memes? Oh, that's a good question, because I haven't... Uh, in this paper, I, we, we had an, the, the, the space to, to insert this, but we have found many wrong memes on the internet. But if you see the comments under the meme, you see that the, the comments are really very hard on the mathematical part. They say, no, this is wrong for this, this, and this. They fix it, so they upload someone else uploads the right meme. So it's not so... They are not just jokes. They are... It's a new way of thinking about mathematics. I know it's hard for us, because we think of textbooks and, and exercises. But for them, it's mathematics. Irina Lublinska, City University of New York. Uh, so my question... Did you find uh, that all students in this particular group, like struggling as well as you advanced students, were equally engaged? Or did you see the difference between students of different uh, ability levels? No, they were totally engaged. We, we had three hours activity, three hours running. They created the, the meme, the video. And in these three hours, they had the break, the coffee break. And more than half the class remained in the classroom. They, they had the flow, really. 
the, because they wanted to do it. Well, if we don't have further questions, then I will again say thank you very much. Lunch thank time. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.